Hello, I'm Lori Guler. I'm the Transition Services Manager for the Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program. As such, I provide oversight of the SSL TAP team of teams, including resources from DOD, DEA, the Department of Labor, the Department of Veterans Affairs, and New York State agencies, all co-located in Clark Hall to assist your soldiers and their family members with making career decisions. Come learn about SFL TAP and find out from messaging to service delivery what makes Fort Drum SFL TAP unique. First and foremost, we want to dispel the misconception that SFL TAP is about separating soldiers from the Army, an event during out processing. SFL TAP is actually about making career decisions and can have a positive impact on readiness, both tactically and strategically. Soldiers initiating services early in the process should come in with three options, re-enlistment, joining the reserves or the National Guard, or if they choose to separate, to serve in their civilian communities by exploring options in employment, education, and entrepreneurship. At one point, 40% of soldiers who re-enlisted here had started the SFL TAP process. We've even seen NCOs and officers planning to retire continue on active duty after starting the process. Those who decide to remain on active duty after starting the SFL TAP process now enhance tactical readiness because the Army retains all that training and experience. But it also has leaders who have received some professional development, life skills, if you will, they can share with more junior soldiers and officers. For those making a successful transition, they project a positive image on the Army and enhance recruitment of quality candidates for generations of soldiers to come, thereby maintaining the premier all-volunteer fighting force. We see this dialogue play out as we work with employers who are so impressed by their experiences working with the program and with the soldiers that they tell us they are spreading the word to their relatives and friends about what the Army provides to soldiers. As we move along in this presentation, you will meet the team who is working with your soldiers and their family members to assist them with their career goals and decisions. Of benefit to the soldiers is that all of these programs are, once again, co-located on the second floor of Clark Hall, with just a couple of exceptions. As of 1 October 19, NDAA 19 resulted in a complete facelift of SFL TAP, services and processes. It became law that soldiers initiate services not later than 365 days prior to contractual ETS or REFRAD or UQR. To initiate services, soldiers begin with an individual counseling, which is followed by pre-separation counseling. At the IIC, soldiers make their appointments for required services. These services equal 44 hours of counseling and classroom work. At Fort Drum, we schedule these 44 hours over the course of six months if the soldier initiates services not later than a year from separation date. Soldiers may start services up to 18 months prior to separation date or 24 months prior to planned retirement. The key to being flexible in scheduling, i.e. scheduling around unit training, and impacting retention is to get soldiers to initiate services early. Soldiers planning to re-enlist are not excluded from initiating services. They will proceed through the process until they re-enlist and remember, they take with them professional development that will assist them as they become coaches, teachers, and mentors. Alex Cummings sends out an attendance report every Tuesday. This report tells you what soldiers did or did not attend their scheduled appointments for the previous week. Every Thursday, Alex sends out an event report that tells you what soldiers have appointments the following week. The precept update goes out on Fridays to let you know who initiated services, i.e. completed precept, since the previous loss roster. Also, as we'll talk about this later, on Fridays, I send out a CSP working packets roster so you can see who has working applications out for the career skills programs. The quarterly Mountain Transition Council meets to bring transition stakeholders and units together to discuss issues in any area of this piece of the soldier life cycle. Medical, dental, CIF, housing, SFL TAP, orders, IDES, etc. The division sergeant major and the garrison sergeant major co-chair this meeting. All units are required to send a representative and CSMs are highly encouraged to attend. 
You may also hear from one of our two transition services specialists who are points of contact for their respective units. You will hear from them as we go on a little farther into the presentation. Now it's time to meet the team of teams and learn more about the specific services available to you and your soldiers. Hello, my name is Rosalinda White. I'm the Contractor Installation Manager for the Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program at Fort Drum. I am responsible for overseeing daily operations at the SVLTAP Center and the contractor staff. We are located on the second floor of Clark Hall in room C2-14. The main goal of SFL-TAP is to help service members and their families make informed career decisions, whether that is re-enlistment, joining the National Guard or Reserves, transitioning to a new career path, continuing their education, going into a trade or entrepreneurship. The Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program team offers a multitude of services, including career counseling. It is important to understand your goals and the labor market to make life decisions. Resume reviews, what type of resume would the service member like to submit to a future employer? A functional resume, which highlights skills and abilities. A chronological resume, which highlights work history, including that from their most recent position. A combination of both or a federal resume for civilian employment in the federal sector. Is that resume tailored to a particular job announcement? We also offer case management. This includes the individualized initial counseling. During this counseling, the service members and their counselors will discuss their career goals and concerns they may have relating to a transition from active duty. Complete an assessment of personal and family needs and abilities and their career readiness standards. The career counselors will assist with class scheduling and link the service members with referrals to additional resources. The SFLTAP counselors also facilitate courses that offer information that may be useful during this journey, including pre-separation counseling, which discusses DOD services, programs, and benefits the service members may be eligible for. Managing your transition, which is meant to assist the service member in understanding and achieving realistic career goals and maintaining resilience throughout the journey. The MOS Crosswalk course helps service members consider current knowledge, skills, abilities, and interests and begin identifying skills, experience, credentials, and education obtained in the military and transition them to civilian opportunities. Financial Planning for Transition discusses their current financial situation and helps ensure financial preparedness. We also offer additional courses such as Advanced Resume, Guide to Federal Employment, which provides information, tools, and links that will assist them during their journey from their military career to a civilian position in the federal government. Interviewing techniques. How long has it been since the service member has interviewed for employment? Salary negotiations, which goes over all elements of a compensation package and negotiable areas. And dress for success. SFL-TAP has three administrative staff members who will greet your soldiers and their family members at the front desk, register them in the SFL-TAP system, and answer any questions. Soldiers and family members may come to the SFL-TAP center or call to initiate services. There are 12 career counselors who are ready to join your team as your soldiers begin their career decision-making process two financial counselors who will assist them with their financial questions and any assistance needed to assess financial preparedness, and the LNO. The LNO completes weekly reports, including attendance, which assists units in tracking appointment attendance, the events report, which includes what events are being held the following week and who is scheduled to attend, and the pre-separation report, which tracks pre-separation completion since the last lost roster distribution. As I previously stated, the main goal of SFL-TAP is to help your soldiers and their family members make informed career decisions. They are all soldiers for life. When they are successful, regardless of their career goals, we are all successful and we are proud to assist them. I am Maurice Mitchell, I go by Mitch, and I'm one of the Transition Services Specialists. My office is in Clark Hall, room C2-8. My phone number is 772 32 one of my jobs is to act as liaison between some of the units on post and the SFL TAP team and our counselors. My units of responsibility are 1st BCT, 10th CAV, Devarty, U.S. Army Garrison, and 91st MP. 
I also handle employer contact and outreach. Most people are aware that we do a career fair once a quarter. We also do industry days where we have events that are tailored toward one particular industry like healthcare, maintenance, etc. We also schedule hiring events. Uh, most people are aware of what we do due to our job postings. Most of the employers will send um, job posts almost on a daily basis. My job is to make sure I get it out to the counselors for further on distribution to the soldiers, get it posted on our Facebook account where, where appropriate, and also get it onto the bulletin board. Recently, one of the tasks that I've taken on is telefacilitation. As we're aware, due to COVID-19, we want to minimize our exposure. So a lot of our deliverables to our soldiers, we have moved over to a, a telefacilitation method. That includes normal dial-up lines where there's a two-way conversation between the counselors and the entire class. One of the other methods we're working on is getting the soldiers the ability to see the slides so there's more of an interaction, interactive feel between the counselor and the entire class. Some of the one-on-one -on -one things that we've normally done with the counselor and the soldiers, that's primarily being done by one-on-one -on -one teleconference. Hey, my name is Desmond Jones. I'm the other transition services specialist. I am located at Clark Hall in room C2-8. My telephone number is 315-772-2048. I am the point of contact for 2nd Brigade, HHBN, Sustainment Brigade, and Tenant Units. If you have questions about your soldiers or their status and you need additional assistance, please do not hesitate to contact me. I also send out weekly emails to soldiers about upcoming events. This makes them aware of additional opportunities to connect and they can register for those events. Welcome. My name is Les Barber, Educational Services Specialist assigned to Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program. My phone number is 315-772-3682. I'm part of the education team that's located in Clark Hall for education services for those soldiers transitioning from the military. My primary responsibility or key task is to provide individual one-on-one -on -one education counseling services to those folks leaving the Army, either standard ETS, retirement, medical separation, medical retirement, or administrative separation. Provide personal and career exploration to find educational goals and how those goals fit into academia. For example, you want to be a nurse. Well, is that a CNA, an LPN, an RN, or a BSN? Those will entail different educational institutions to get those credentials. Look at realistic long or short range objectives. Try to make them smart, that they're relevant and timely. Using Army tuition assistance, credential assistance, Go Army Ed, or other financial sources that may be required. Look at educational programs, college programs, admission, enrollment, also how Veterans Administration educational benefits fit into the mix. And one of the things that uh, I have a lot of experience on is the transferability of education benefits post 9-11 to either a spouse or a child. All Fort Drum separating soldiers will also come to see me for separation clearing. Uh, spouses are welcome to participate or call. Uh, separation is an important change in family life. Uh, thank you. I'm here to serve you and your soldiers. Hello, my name is Andy Hillebrand. I am the Transition Education Counselor and Instructor for the Managing Your Education class. I am located in Clark Hall in Bravo 2-3. My telephone number is 315-772-2143. While also providing one-on-one -on -one counseling for soldiers, my primary function is instruction of the Managing Your Education my ed course. Things talked about in that course are the benefits of going to college. They are knowledge, general education, marketability, networking, and higher earning salary potential. We carefully go over 35 factors to, choo uh, to consider when choosing a college or university and we dissect them in a finite fashion while comparing multiple universities throughout the course of the two-day course. We understand how to effectively use FAFSA, our GI Bill, in conjunction with grants and scholarships so the soldier can maximize their education. We go through the detailed admissions process 
from getting a veteran into college or university, vocational or technical school. And we go through doctorate degrees, master's degrees, and bachelor's degrees. We also explore the college terminology, demands of the organizational, with high stress on being ready academically to achieve in school. Hi, my name is Patty Shields. Lorelei Madison and I work with the Career Skills Program here in Fort Drum. You can find us in Clark Hall, second floor, room B2-7 or B2-9. Our hours are 7.30 in the morning until 1600 in the afternoon. The Career Skills Program was established a few years ago to help service members with their transition from their military careers into their civilian careers. We do that primarily through employment skills training, training that ends in certification or licensure, or through internships, where soldiers can get training, experience, network building, resume building, practice interviewing, and potential jobs. Who's eligible for a Career Skills Program? Soldiers that are within 180 days of their ETS or separation or retirement are eligible to participate. Soldiers that are going through the med board process don't have an, an end date at, when they're applying, so we go 85 days from their MRDP date, Medical Retention Determination Point. Peblos can provide that date to service members. How do you participate with the Career Skills Program? The first step is to establish what it is you want to do when you're getting out of the military. With the 255 or so soldiers that are getting out of the military every month from Fort Drum, that's 255 different ideas of what they want to do and where they want to do it. So we invite soldiers to come into our offices and talk to us about what their plans are, what their dreams are, both short term and long term, so that we can help them make those decisions. The next step then is to help connect them to an opportunity that fits with their career goals. We do that by introducing them to program managers, by introducing, connecting them with employers, and then letting them think those processes out. We encourage them to talk to their commands, to talk to their friends or mentors that they may have to help them make these decisions. Once a soldier's made a decision about which program they want to participate with, then we give them an application. That application is what they're going to submit to their commands for approval. Programs that are within 50 miles of Fort Drum are approved at the battalion level. Company commanders have a say-so. They can concur or non-concur, but approval is done with the battalion command. Programs that are, um, take place further than 50 miles from Fort Drum are under PTDY status. So the approval is still with the battalion commander, but the PTDY is approved by the deputy commanding general. So our target audience with the Career Skills Program are soldiers that are at risk. At risk soldiers are soldiers that are E1s to E4s, soldiers that are in their first term of service, and soldiers that are in going through a medical separation. But our program can benefit everyone, and we've, service, we've helped soldiers that are of all different ranks in the Army because every single soldier that's getting out of the military has the same concern and that's that they want to get out of the military with the best possible opportunities available to them. Our current guidance for soldiers participating in the program is that they watch their training calendars and apply at times that is conducive to that training calendar. So if your unit is going through JRTC, don't apply for a time period during JRTC. If you're applying early in your 180-day process, because JRTC is at the end of your 180-day process, then include a little note in your application that explains that reasoning. Most of our programs are between two and three months. We have a few programs that are longer. If your program is a longer program, then include a little note in your, in, in your application that explains why you're asking for a longer time period. Guidance says that retirees and ITIS soldiers have preference, and we encourage soldiers that are applying to include a note of endorsement from their command. That could be your first sergeant, your sergeant major, company commander, a platoon leader, anybody who could speak to why you're a good candidate for this program. The benefits of our program are really a lot, and it's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing this program so much. 
The first thing is that a lot of soldiers, as they're getting out of the military, have lost their network. Either they're very young and they never had a network, or they're an older soldier and they've been away from the location where they're going to be residing post-military, and they've lost those networking connections. So the first thing is, is that when they get into these situations where they're working in the environment uh, that they plan on participating with post-military, they're making those networking connections again. Another reason is that a lot of soldiers, when they're getting out of the military, are thinking, I just need to secure a job. And they're not necessarily aiming for the best job that they could possibly get or maximizing their potential. By stepping into a career skills program, they can get into that civilian environment and really get understand that they have a ton of experience and a ton of potential that they offer to that to the civilian community. And I think it helps them to see that they can reach when they're applying for different positions. Another thing that I've asked soldiers to do is to take a risk. When you're applying for a job, employers are looking for the most qualified candidate. But when you're applying for an internship, they're looking for capable candidates. So you can take your experience and your training that you got in the military and you can really stretch it into something that you've never done before, something that you imagine that you can do but you don't feel like you're completely qualified to do. And then through the process of the training or the internship, you become fully qualified and the best candidate. Another thing that I think that our program benefits soldiers with is separation anxiety. When soldiers are coming out of the military, they have a tremendous amount of change ahead of them. They're thinking about where they're going to live and how they're going to purchase a house there or find housing there, they're, how they're going to transfer, how this is going to impact their family, and they're worried that they're not going to have a job. Our program, I've seen many soldiers come through my office and they're wringing their hands, they're telling me they're not sleeping at night, worrying about this transition. By getting into the civilian sector, by getting this training, it completely brings down their anxiety because they're setting themselves up to have a good job when they get out of the military. I want to finish this brief with a few examples of some of our success stories. The first one you see here is Solar Ready Vets. Solar Ready Vets offers training in the installation, maintenance, and sales of solar equipment. Every single person who goes through one of our programs gets employment assistance when they complete the program and a direct connection with employment. Specialist Stuart, Stuart Lanter was hired by Strata O&M Tech with a starting salary of $52,000 a year. ABC Construction or Construction Craft Laborer is a program that offers general construction. Specialist Timothy Parker was hired by the Civil Group of Alabama starting with a starting salary of $60,000 per year. Enrich Opportunity is a program that offers project management, human resources, or IT certifications. Lieutenant Kevin Albuquerque was hired with Apagi IT Services, starting with a starting salary of $80,000 per year. On our last slide, you'll see the internships, some of the internship success stories that we have. Morabido is a fuel transporting company. Specialist Cameron Chase came to us. He had his CDL license, but he needed practice so that he could be hired at a higher salary. Specialist Cameron has left this company with a starting salary of $44,000 a year and a guaranteed position. GSI is a land stabilization company. The neat thing about GSI is that, that you can live anywhere in the country and they fly you to the training location. Specialist Andrew Miner was hired with this company with a starting salary of $42,000 a year. The last company that I wanted to highlight is Davis Ulmer. Davis Ulmer uh, is always looking for talent, not necessarily experience. They'll bring their interns in, give them training in project management, installation and maintenance, sales, and engineer design. When a soldier finishes with the program, they are, have a guaranteed position all over the United States with one of their sister companies. Here's a list of a few of the soldiers that were hired with Davis Elmer with a starting salary of $45,000 a year. The last thing that I wanted to bring out when we talk about benefits of this program is that soldiers completing a career skills program 
project a positive image to the community that impacts strategic readiness. Over 96% of our soldiers become employed after completing a career skills program. Again, you can find us in Clark Hall in room B2-7 and B2-9. The next topic I will discuss is the Veterans Benefits Administration. Here at Fort Drum, the supervisor is Kevin Esslinger, and he can be reached at 315-772-5317 or 5768. The Veterans Benefits Administration is primarily here to assist soldiers with their service-connected disability, whether they're separating due to ETS, retirement, or separating through the IDES process. Now, they have worked with two other service organizations in the Fort Drum area to help out the soldiers, and that is the Veterans of Foreign War and the New York State Division of Veteran Services. Service members can file their claims 180 days prior to ETS or their retirement date. Veterans Benefit Administration has two staff members located over at the SVAC, and they're primarily there to, to assist IDES soldiers with vocational rehabilitation and employment. There's three staff members over at the CTMC area, primarily for the IDES soldiers, and one staff member at Clark Hall to assist in ETS and retirement claims. Fort Drum has an amazing team of seven VA benefits advisors led by Mike Montgomery. This team is located on the second floor of Clark Hall, room B218. The primary function of the benefits advisors is to deliver the six-hour VA benefits and services briefing, which consists of information about VA health care benefits, education and employment resources, life insurance, home loans, and other community resources. In addition, the benefits advisor support SFL TAP capstone by seeing each soldier individually to discuss any questions or remaining concerns they may have. If soldiers have difficulty registering free benefits, the team provides assistance. Soldiers may walk in for one-on-one -on -one assistance at any time. Additionally, by exception and special request, especially for soldiers with cognitive issues or physical or mental impairments that may be preclude classroom participation or attendance, they may deliver the VBS, the VA Benefits and Services Briefing, individually. Finally, the benefits advisors are available to deliver any of the nine VA Military Life Cycle modules of instruction. If you take a look at the modules, you'll see that these modules are pertinent to different times in a soldier's military life cycle. Units or soldiers may access these modules by coordinating for a benefits advisor to come to the unit to provide the briefing or briefings or may access them via JKO. The modules are standalone, so you may schedule for any one or multiple subject areas. Again, the benefits advisors are located in B218 in Clark Hall. For assistance or to schedule a MLC module presentation, contact Mike Montgomery, and if he is not available, contact George Berth. Thank you for your service and all that you do to support your soldiers. Hello, my name is George Darrimple. I work for New York State Division of Veteran Services. My office is located in Clark Hall room 82-4, up on the second floor, right across the hall from the finance window. I am what is known as a VSO, or Veteran Service Officer. As a VSO, my job here on Fort Drum is to advocate for veterans. I do VA claims for both retirees, separating soldiers, and already veterans. You received a briefing earlier about how the soldiers receive a VA briefing as they separate from the United States military. You also received a briefing about how the processing from the VA directly is done. I'm that piece in the middle. I'm the one who actually does the VA claim and advocates for the veterans as they separate. Currently, we do about 250 to 300 original claims every single year. And we offer a class here on Fort Drum twice a month to help soldiers walk through that whole issue about how to do uh, their VA claim. Now some things as leaders that you can do to assist the soldiers is understand 
there are two critical pieces of this process, which is getting their phase one and phase two physicals done in a timely manner and receiving their medical records. The reason why that becomes important is the timeline. Physicals depend directly on what's going on here at Fort Drum. If you have a deployment to JRTC going on, that may hinder the ability to get those physicals done in a timely manner. And also medical records, depending on the time of year that you are getting out, could take up to 30 to 60 days to get back. And when you only have 180 days left in the United States military, losing two months waiting for medical records could vastly impact your VA claim. Now the process once again is you have to do your physical, then you get your medical records, then you do your VA claim with a VSO like myself, then you do the VA physicals, then you separate from the military and wait for your results. That's the process here and I look forward to working with you. Uh, once again, my office is located in room A2-4 up on the second floor at Clark Hall. And let me leave you with the motto of New York State Division of Veterans Services. Now that you've served, let us serve you. Thank you. Veterans of Foreign Wars. The point of contact for Veterans of Foreign Wars is Nancy Ortiz. The VFW is what we call a Veterans Service Organization, and they are located in Clark Hall, room B2-18. The purpose of the VFW is to provide assistance in filing VA disability claims. VFW does not require a person to have any affiliation or membership with VFW in order to receive assistance. They mainly handle two types of cases as it applies to VA disability, BDD or benefits delivery at discharge, and that is when the soldier files between 90 and 180 days out from separation, and that's whether it's ETS or retirement. BDD exempt starts at one day all the way up to 89 days prior to separation. The disability does not have to be combat, wartime, or training related. It just must have occurred while on active duty. Another service that is provided through SFO TAP is the Education and Employment Initiative, or E2I. The point of contact for that is Louis Figueroa. He's in Clark Hall, room B2-17. His office number is 315-772-1381. ETY assists recovering service members, or RSMs, with seeking new career opportunities beyond military service. We work with VA Vocational Rehabilitation and Employment, or VRNE, counselors who assess and identify skills. We also reinforce existing skills by matching certification and training opportunities for no cost and aids in the use of available resources for furthering education and employment needs. We also coach RSMs or recovering service members in developing a transition goal plan for education, employment, or both, broadening their capabilities in support of their future needs. We also help with maintaining relationships with private, public, or nonprofit sector employers that are interested in helping place RSMs into new careers. Also another program through E2I is the Operation Warfighter, or OWF, um, and that will be assessed during the initial meeting with the E2I Regional Coordinator. We provide federal internship programs for RSMs, also maximize recovery time, provides valuable work experience in a nonprofit environment, and assists with developing new employment skills. We also assist with providing the benefits of career preparedness for transition to civilian life also help with connecting federal agencies inter with internship opportunities with interested RSMs. Those who are eligible, eligibility criteria. ETUI or OWF is available to all recovering service members in all branches of military services, as well as all components of those services, active duty, guard, or reserve. We also want to focus on enhancing recovery, rehabilitation, and reintegration for recovering service members. The process for ETUI. They must complete the vocation rehabilitation and employment assessment, sign their ETI form for service members, which gives us permission to distribute their resume. We will review and revise the resume as needed, and we'll review uh, certifications of informal training. We'll also help with identifying potential employment interests and locations, and assist with helping you set your goals to match your service members with opportunities prior to separation, which includes education and employment. New York State Department of Labor. Point of contact is Brian Jackson. His office is in Clark Hall, room A2-2. His phone number is 
1-800-273-7099. The New York State Department of Labor offers a holistic approach in providing individual career services exclusively to veterans and eligible persons. The eligibility, individuals with significant barriers to employment. A veteran or eligible spouse is determined to have a SBE or a significant barrier to employment if he or she attests to belonging to at least one of the following six categories. Special disabled or disabled veteran, homeless, recently separated service member who was unemployed for 27 or more weeks in the previous 12 months. Offenders, which includes currently incarcerated or recently released from prison, low income or without a high school diploma or equivalent certificate. Special disabled veterans are veterans with a 30% VA rating or higher Disabled veterans have a VA rating of 0 to 20%. Transitioning service members who have not met career readiness standards between the ages of 18 and 24, active duty service members being involuntarily separated through RIF or reduction in force, members of armed forces who are wounded, ill, or injured and receiving treatment in the military treatment facility or warrior transition unit, spouses or other caregivers of such wounded, ill, or injured members, or Vietnam era veterans. Individualized career services provided. We provide comprehensive assessments, labor market information, individual employment plans and career planning, case management, resume development and assistance, job referral or job zone registration, interview skills, information on federal, state, and local civil service jobs, referral to other veteran service agencies, unemployment insurance information, the job zone, that's an interactive resource to assist in career management. Registered users have access to the Job Scout Automated Job Matching System powered by SMART, which stands for Skills Matching and Referral Technology, and this to customize job leads to send directly to your email. You can reach this site by going to www.jobzone.ny.gov. Hi, my name is Leon Donaldson. I serve as the program manager for the Employment Readiness Program. Together with Meredith Taylor, my educator, we operate the Employment Readiness Program here on Fort Drum. We're located at the Soldier and Family Assistance Center. We provide service and assistance and resources to the military community in all aspects of employment. We do this by providing a number of workshops and seminars, such as the Federal Employment Workshop, consisting of USAjobs.gov. Resume Start to Finish, which is our civilian resume course. Interview, career fair preparation, and a LinkedIn seminar as well. We also provide one-on-one -on -one services. Resume and cover letter writing assistance, one-on-one -on -one career counseling, job search assistance, interview preparation, and mock interviews as well. We also maintain a job bank. Our job bank consists of over 200 employers with links, open positions, ongoing positions, and it's not only locally, it's within the state and it's also international as well. We provide this assistance on an ongoing basis, day to day and week to week. Our workshops and seminars are given twice a month. We also keep all of our workshops and seminars up to date and we provide a schedule for these seminars and workshops on a monthly basis. Now that you've met the SFL TAP team of teens, I hope we've dispelled any misconceptions that you may have had about the program and that we've helped you understand what services are here to help you support your soldiers and their families. Please keep in mind that although we did not go into detail, we execute expedited services for administrative separations and for those soldiers in the IDES process. As soon as you identify a potential chapter, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us get started in the process. Important to the success for all of your soldiers as they go through the process is to start early, regardless of what their plans may be. We are here to help you support your soldiers and their families. If at any time you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Again, I'm Lori Guler, and I'm in Clark Hall, room C2-8. I can be reached at 315-772-3284, and I am on Global. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your service and your support of your soldiers and their families.